Mario, it's nice to have you in this interview. Thanks yeah, for being M here. MJX, never heard before this name, and I never heard before of Mayfire, but I have listened to the album. It's outstanding. It's a great album. Thank so you. before we talk about the new album that nobody has ever heard about Mayfire, I guess. So it will be your debut album. So could you yeah, tell us about the idea? Who had the idea to form Mayfire? And yeah, how did it happen? Absolutely. Well, uh, the, the concept Mayfire started around uh, 2012, I think. Uh, uh, it was uh, actually based on a, an idea that uh, I came up with uh, a night I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so I just started writing this uh, concept, and since I'm uh, also working in the, like the, the movie industry and uh, been doing like a lot of science fiction movies and stuff like that, it's it's kind of always been a part of uh, my interests, mm -hmm. and of course music as well. Uh, I've been doing music for for as long as I can remember, and uh, Mayfire kind of uh, every like the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, in terms of like the Mayfire visual concept came when the music uh, part came into place. And that's where I meant, uh, that's when I meant, uh, met uh, Rune, uh, my colleague. He's, uh, he's on his way, actually. But see, I think he's stuck in traffic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so me and him, we've been working together for about five years now and just creating this whole concept musically and uh, visual-wise. And... Um, yeah, like is it Rex? Everything. Break by break. Is it Rex or? Um, yeah, he, yeah. His nickname is Rex, and and the, the 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 why we have those names is more of because we in the, those five years we build uh, was building this concept. We uh, tried to stay anonymous just to like build up more anticipation and uh, mystery around the project. And uh, it's also a connection to our characters or roles in like the visual universe as well. So, but so now you are, you aren't um, hidden. Now your identity is put to a broader public. Yeah, yeah. Until now, so uh, on stage uh, we will have uh, our costumes, like anonymous costumes. But uh, in sessions like this, and uh, okay. Outside the stage, we are like ourselves because it's more of a um, stage act presence. Maybe it's oh. a little similar to Slipknot in some way. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. There's a lot of bands I've seen doing this, like Ghost and Sleep Token. and, uh, yeah. and So absolutely. We, uh, uh, it's not directly linked, but I used to work with Alan Walker. Uh, a couple of years back and he has this uh this uh uh thing in front of his face and uh, and uh yeah so i guess it's some a lot of inspirations from things yeah hey, Rune just uh, arrived so yeah uh... hi to see you <laughs> hi to see nice to see you yeah and the 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 cowls, uh, the cowls, it's, it's got no religious background. It's just your stage appearance. How you said, like Ghost or other bands, it's just your um, personal appearance, or does it have a religious background? You know these cowls. Yeah, no, it's not religious. It's um, it's more based like the whole the the, the history or the the. The story uh, is uh, is based like far into the future, where tyranny uh, of a king has like taken over the whole world, and uh, they build like this big global city in the like all the people that are um, like this, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, well, most of the people of the planet lives in that big city under the king's control. And the ones that live outside the city uh, are like the uh, outlanders, the, the the ones that 
is always like in a war against the tyranny. It's like you know Star Wars, like Empire versus oh, yeah, and stuff like that. But you also have the Shadow Guild, and the Shadow Guild is uh, is like a part uh, in the middle that actually fight for uh, um, the true heir. And the king, the Tyran, is not the true heir, and the Shadow Guild is like scatter all into that wilderness and trying to like find the true heir and he's out there that's mm -hmm. like part of the plot in the music cinematic i had the connections to, to darth vader because yeah. appearance a little bit it was a little bit darth vader costumes yeah. or are there evil guys this was my idea oh yeah no we're the good guys <laughs> no evil guys you are not it's like yeah. a mayfire symbol it's like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that. Uh, yeah, okay. That one. So okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 a bit complicated just to throw it out there, but it's it's it has a story and has a has a plot. So um, uh, our ideas is like to build each music video as a part of that uh, red line, like telling the story. So if you see them chronologically. Like, chronologically mm -hmm. you will have like the full film all the cinema cinematic film okay yeah and um yeah it's a great sounding album and it's a very with very bombastic arrangements yeah it's an outstanding production so did you have help from the sound engineers or external producers or did you do it completely on your own no, uh, me and Rune has uh, mainly done, uh, uh, done all of the writing. Uh, we used uh, 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 a guy on uh, mixing and mastering. His name is Einar uh, Christiansen Five. He's also my colleague because I, I work in this uh, film company uh, here in Norway, and he's uh, like uh, head of uh, the sound department. So uh, he, he was a really... Uh, um good asset to uh help us bring this to life but uh rune is uh mainly the like the the, the multi instrumentalist so he plays all the things uh all the instruments and we used uh also co 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 uh, collaborated with the board called star from lepros mm -hmm. on the uh, drums on the first songs and um uh i did the vocals and uh, the lyrics and stuff like that so um yeah um he played drums on some more songs or just on shadows uh two songs yeah, two songs two, uh, uh but yeah it was another one as well but we uh, kind of it yeah it didn't fit the album so uh, maybe maybe later <laughs> okay okay and what was your idea to engage him, musical reasons or friendship or what was behind it? Oh, yeah, I think it was more uh, uh, randomly, I guess, because uh, the guy that we uh, uh, helped us like bring out the songs in the beginning, he uh, had used him uh, a couple of times before. So uh, they were uh, buddies and that we didn't even kind of know who board was before uh, we uh, started working with together so uh, yeah it was uh, it was a blast okay and uh, your songs are heavy and dramatic in one way but they have got soft and tender parts as well it's a good balance a good blend between these two poles so how hard was it to find the right balance between these two their yeah, parts uh, so. uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, not that hard actually because I think uh, um, I'm a big fan of cinematic big movie scores. So I have uh, all the nice melodies, the things that you know crawl under your skin and makes you feel something. Um, that is something I'm working very hard to uh, put into our music. And I come from a, a thrash metal background. So I grew up with Metallica and Pantera. So so that's in both of those elements are in my 
blood, so to speak. Mm. So it's been a conscious <laughs> effort to blend those two together. Yeah, it's done very well. So, and is there a lyrical concept on cloudscapes and soloids? Yeah, well, we try to write it so you can like in in interpret it uh, in two ways. You can like connect it to the visual, the un the, like the universe, uh, cinematic universe, and you could also like listen to it uh, and kind of not relate to the visuals, but relate to anything else. I heard people like listen to the songs and they said like the second time they listened to the song, it gave them something completely different when they try to listen to the lyrics on a second time is it just, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that was the idea, I guess. Mm -hmm. Try to write it a bit clever, open, I guess. And that was probably the the hardest part. Uh, one thing is the dynamics and the hard and the soft and the the flow and ebb of the the music, but to make it cohesive and yet stand on their own. If you listen to one song, you should you, you should be able to listen to one song and it shouldn't fall apart. And it should make sense when you listen to all nine songs. Of uh, course, the whole concept is important. Yeah. So yeah. that that was the hard part from this album. Yeah, I think. Ah, yeah. And um, the shadows you mentioned before, it's a breathtaking song. So which kind of shadows do you mean? Well, the shadows is more like linked to the the characters we play, like the shadow guild, the protectors from the dark, like uh, in the shadows that uh, kind of watches over you. Um, and there's also like a big dark secret in that the the whole universe is like also a, a one part of the plot, is that like there's a we kind of protect something that can uh, as well as. The, uh, destroy the whole planet in a way and it can uh, also bring life so it's like a balance a struggle for balance there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and a sense of purpose it's a very raw song with some growls so is it your thrash metal or death metal song is it some kind of your past Rex? Yeah, the, the balance way we're more <laughs> weighted on him on that one <laughs> yeah that was uh uh we needed something to be uh we had written almost the entire album and we needed something that uh was uh could be uh more of a statement so to speak more groovy and more more uh just yeah yeah we kind of have the perspective of the enemy in in our heads when we wrote it yeah. like the, the bad guy song <laughs> so we yeah. needed something uh, hard and uh, kind of menacing and kind of uh, almost uh, a military March. Rammstein kind of thing. Mm. So uh, that was probably uh, pulling out all the uh, old school. Uh, <laughs> your old, the... your past, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you told it, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, and in Winter Nut, it's outstanding as well. It's your second video or your first. I'm not quite sure, but the vocals remind me a little bit to Tom Englund from Evergrey. It's got an Evergrey influence. Am I right? Or is he singing in the background or what's... Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, you're... I heard that comment before, actually. Uh, I haven't I have, I have. haven't listened too much to Evergrey. Of course, I listen to it, but it's not a direct uh, inspiration or anything. I think it's just more uh, uh, how it ended up, just by pure coincidence, I guess. Uh, okay. And the you know the like the throat singing, it's uh, it's also a kind of coincidence because we had uh, like a summer party here at my workplace, and there was this uh, like the native Norwegian that's like uh, living up in the north. They have this. Uh, they call it joik and uh, throat singing. So uh, he kind of came here to learn, uh, teach us how to to do it. So uh, when, with that fresh in mind, I, I was thinking, why not put it on a song? So that's yeah. there. <laughs> okay. Okay. And 
Yeah, um, the final song on the album is, is The Age of Kings. It's a very melancholic and emotional song. So what stands behind The Age of Kings? So that's like the final like the final chapter for the album. So it's a, like a conclusion or a, the grand finale. Yeah, yeah and it's uh, it's meant uh, if when all the music videos uh, is released and you watch it from uh, the fall and you end up with the Age of Kings, it kind of ties in some of the plot twists and yeah. uh, it kind of summarizes some of the uh, the, the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you watch it, you will go. Perhaps you will get some. Uh, I'm actually working on the music video right now, so uh, yeah, be, be so careful it, what you promise now. <laughs> <laughs> so it is kind of a a peaceful moment, but it's also a kind of sad moment. Yeah, it's a sad moment. It's a it's a, it's a it's a good moment. It's a relief. It's a, a many feelings at once, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's not the end of the journey. It's kind of a you you land somewhere and you're ready for yeah. the the next mm -hmm. bit. So, yeah. So. yeah, we plan to continue this uh, <laughs> storyline. So you will continue the story that was on this album on on the next album, for example. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. So and your music is labeled as mel melodic heavy rock theater. It's a combination of music and film. You have told me that you are in the film industry as well it's your business as well yeah and um, yeah what's behind this approach do you try to connect music with with videos with movies is your music meant for films for example as a soundtrack or how would you see it well i guess it's like Every opportunity is, is there, I guess. But the main idea from our perspective is since I'm uh I'm in I'm working in the, like in the film industry, so everything's kind of started with uh, a, a, like an idea for a film or a uh something visual. And um uh it just ended up being a music project, a band project with all the vis visual stuff. So um and that's kind of using our strength from uh, Rune's uh, uh, amazing abilities to create uh, these huge, amazing songs to my skills to make visuals uh, and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Combine that or strength into one. That's that's like the main idea. And mm -hmm. of course, we brought on um, members in the band after a while. And uh, now we're um, a full-fledged band ready for going live mm -hmm. if you play live will there be video projections as well on on stage or yeah that's the idea uh every is of course not the, directly the music videos but more uh linked to the the, the universe elements taken from it uh, and stuff like that mm -hmm. adjusted for live performance okay yeah interesting and do you plan a tour, maybe as a special guest of a well-known band, or are there any plans right now? Um, right now, we're trying to get a like uh, we're planning to get our um, kind of release gig going. Uh, we talked about how, where we wanted to do it and stuff like that, but we're not uh, there yet. I guess we're just in the planning phase. Mm. Um, and uh of course we we were thinking it's uh it's a good idea to maybe try to get um uh, us into being a support band for someone uh, in the beginning okay. but uh, like our uh, release concert that's we have uh, plans for like being the main act of course uh, and bringing in some other bands um, mm -hmm. we have we are in the talks with a couple of and uh, local bands from where we are. Mm -hmm. And your videos and movie clips, will, will they be brought to other portals as well? Other portals as YouTube or video portals? Um, some kind of enhancement to the album 
that some people can yeah, listen to your music but see a broader, broader um, visual impression. Yeah, all everything we do will be uh, on YouTube, of course, and uh, we also uh, are in the development of like making a virtual reality concept of our universe, to, like to bring the listener or the viewer into our world, like so you can uh, kind of be there physically and interact with uh, within our universe as well. And uh, so, yeah, so 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 there's a grand plan of doing. A lot of visual stuff for this project. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what are your your role models? So musically and uh, movie wise. So, do you have some role models, favorite bands, or maybe favorite actors or film directors? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't mention his uh, Metallica and some of that. Uh, my background is more. Uh, into the prog metal scene, it's like like Dream Theater uh, uh, and uh, Tesseract, uh, Periphery, Sky Harbor, and uh, all of like more of the modern that kind of modern bands as well. And also, of course, even going further back, there's Metallica, mm -hmm. there's uh, yeah Iron Maiden and stuff like that. So we try, we have like found our common ground or middle ground where both are musically interest oh yeah okay. so of course and the visual style there's like uh dennis villano uh george lucas of course we're both huge fan of star wars and uh stuff like that yeah really star wars was my impression when i saw, saw your pictures your covers and yeah. this was my darth vader is on stage he's <laughs> rocking yeah. on stage inspired so by so much <laughs> yeah, we're we're two guys in the band now with Star Wars tattoos, so uh, I guess uh... lovely. <laughs> ah, yeah, good. Is, uh, a big part of uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's... that I like absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you have other musical projects or bands as well, or is Mayfire your only project right now? We've been like in different bands and projects like for for many years but uh uh for me at least uh, this is like um the passion project i put all my energy into this uh this last five years mayfire is uh life number one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah of course of course one. yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is about mayfire now yeah why Absolutely. did it take five years to release your debut album was it the pandemic or what was behind well, it? Yeah, there's a, a multiple reasons. The one part, of course, is Corona. The other one is like uh, we started the project together and uh, spent some time and uh, with patience and tried to find our like our common ground or or special sound. We didn't want to listen like sound like anyone else in in the matter. Of course, we were inspired by all the bands, but we didn't want it to be a copy of anyone. So we try to work uh, uh, like uh, really hard to find our sound that we both were really happy with. And um, and uh, it's not uh, quite five years. No, no, we no. met in 2019. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, and we signed with Roar in 2020. 20. One. Yeah, something that, because yeah, we, we made four songs with a plan to send them out to labels uh, and see if we can uh, get them interested. And uh, we uh, were so lucky to sign with the uh, Rock of Angels Records, and uh, that's where it like it really got restructured and uh, we started kind of uh, from scratch. We brought we still brought our four songs into the album, but we kind of expanded our thoughts and went more into like the detail work so mm -hmm. and that's been like two years writing the album i guess yeah. about and that's uh, where the pandemic come in because yeah. social distancing and writing songs oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was a tough process yeah so, yeah so that that piece of the process took a little while longer than uh yeah of course yeah. but, we, had the, but yeah. we we made it through and now uh we are ready for everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a 
the song stand on the yeah foreground. It's no huge soloing, not um, like maybe some guys in other bands who try to demonstrate their musical abilities. So it's a good, yeah, it's a song orientation. I say, but like I said in the beginning, a good blend between yeah heavy and dramatic parts. Otherwise. Yeah, tender parts, slow parts, and no soloing. How important is soloing for you? Not uh, really. <laughs> I'm uh, uh, I've never been a big solo guy. I never learned to play guitar through wanting to play guitar solos. I was always the rhythm playing guys like Dave Grohl, James Setfield, mm -hmm. and arrangements. And, yeah. Oh, I I wanted to play rhythm guitar, and for me. The melodies and the song and uh, the energy and the feel that it gives you is way more important than to, you know. Yeah, my my, it's my attitude as well. Yeah. yeah so I, I, when I, uh, if and when I play a solo, I want you to be able to uh, sing it. Like uh, it's instead of the vocals, but it should be a melody and it's. Mm, and should have a purpose yeah. for being there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so there's no uh, big guitar shredding guitar solo ego from me. Okay. That's it. <laughs> so That's it's all it. about the song and it's all about the melody. Yeah. And if uh, you have those two, then I'm satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This were, these were my questions. Do you have further information yeah, for your fans, for the public that is unasked, unmentioned? Uh, no. Come to our concerts, buy our records. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see Mayfire Live, uh, get people to book us because we are ready to come out yeah. to yeah. play our music and to meet you guys. Yeah, because we don't have that network of like uh, people to just call and uh, say, uh, ask if they uh, want us to play there or something. So we kind of are looking for someone to help us out there as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Marius and Rex, thank you very much for this nice interview. You will get feedback it's for the Hardline magazine online and yeah, radio. So, yeah, I will do my best and then all the best golden and platinum records. Thank all the you. best. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Greetings to the other guys that they will be in good shape as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jörg. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.